Now I wanted to talk a little bit more about Kant today and his concept of freedom and free will, and then we'll probably move on to another subject. Now freedom and free will can have many different meanings, but if we take it from kind of the context of what Kant is coming from, he's proving that a law of causality exists in our way of understanding the world, but if that also uh, acts on our own being, on our own agency, then we must also say that we don't have free will. However, the law of causality, which is grouped into our way of understanding the world, only acts on appearances. We understand the world only through appearances. It's after the fact of going through our kind of our mind or our faculties in our mind that we come to understand the world. Kant wants to argue that our freedom is not an appearance that we can ex uh, that we can see or uh, experience, but instead it's something that is in itself. And Kant makes this straight distinction that there are appearances and then there are things in themselves. And the things in themselves are not part of our experiencing of the world, therefore they, are, they don't abide by the law of causality and all the other ways that we uh, come to experience the world. The same goes for understanding yourself. You experience yourself only through the appearances of being yourself. So that can be emotions, that can be senses, that there is a layer from which we see ourselves as ourselves. But what Kant is arguing is that there is actually something deeper inside. Some might call it soul, but there's something that we can't experience from our way of being in the world, but we have to assume is there. And it is that in itself of ourselves that has the property of freedom and free will, and that is able to basically break out of the chain of causality. However, one of the really difficult arguments with making the statement that there are things as appearances and things in themselves is that we really can't know anything about the thing in itself. Since it's not a part of the world, we have to really only assume based off faith or inference to the best explanation that it is there. However, again, we cannot prove it at all. Uh, pragmatists and scientists who only uh, believe things to be true based off of evidence can never really accept this. You really have to accept the in itself based off of faith. For example, let's just consider a table. Now you can experience the table, you can go under it, you can pick it up, you can move it around. Those are all appearances of the table. Kant argues that the table has an in itself, that it exists in a way that we don't experience it, but it is still there. Now it's worth saying that the in itself and the thing of appearance isn't a one-to-one -one relationship. It isn't as if there is a table in itself and then there's a chair in itself, and then there is a you know, ground in itself. It's that the in itself isn't uh, distinguished by objects and units, because Kant believes that our ability to distinguish between units or objects in the world is still a faculty of experience. So to say there are units of the in itself would be another contradiction. If we really want to believe that the in itself exists, we can't really say anything about it except the fact that it does exist. We can't say how it acts because we don't even know if it acts in, its, in the way that we understand what acting is. It's basically a complete black hole if you want to think about it. The only thing that we know is that there are certain things or uh, ways of being in the world that we simply can't explain with a caus causality uh, or a, a mechanistic way of looking at the world, one of those things being free will. So one way of getting around of things that we can't ex explain in a scientific or theoretical way would be to think that somehow maybe the in itself, the thing that we can never experience or understand, has a way of engaging with the world or our world of experience such that it makes it possible, that one of those things being free will. Now that in itself world, the kind of the whole in reality, can be uh, characterized in many different ways. Some people might say it's it's religious, it's it's God, and that is kind of why things work. Um, some more, I, I guess, postmodern thinkers, I believe postmodern, might say that it is kind of the whole in reality, that it is the break in language. If we always think in our language, it is the thing that language simply can't comprehend. 
Regardless of how we name it, it is a break in our understanding, this in itself, that enables things to exist that simply don't comprehend um, with our uh, way of understanding the world.